G'day folks. Well, for tonight's equipment autopsy, I have something quite interesting. Uh, at first I thought it was a hydraulic motor and that I could use it for my shredding system project, but of course they don't make hydraulic motors with four ports on them. <coughs> As it turns out, this is a Charlin Eaton uh, hydraulic steering valve, or valve body anyway. You can mount a steering wheel on here and use it to control hydraulic steering rams. Hence the marine ply, this one's come out of a boat. Uh, they've chopped it out of the firewall by the looks of it. I don't believe it would work, it's full of dirt and crap at the moment, so it's all got to be stripped down and rebuilt if it's ever to be used again, but I have no intention or need for that, so we're going to try and strip this whole thing down. They retail for about, I don't know, almost $600 Australian. Uh, it's a model 211-1008-001 by Charlin, C-H-A-R-L-Y-N-N, -N, which is a part of Eaton Corporation. Uh, Eaton have a massive amount of different products, control over companies and things like that worth looking up the Eaton website just to explore what they do. They do massive hybrid drive systems for trucks, um, various hydraulic motors, pumps, all that sort of stuff, UPS, I believe they have shares in Powerware or something, they'll control Powerware uh, for UPS and other various power filtration and conditioning systems. Uh, yeah, Eaton is a very big company. They supply gears and transmissions and things like that for the automotive industry, brakes, clutches, lifters, um, tappets, valve equipment, sodium light. Okay, so I've separated the optional steering column attachment from the main steering valve or whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is what you see on the website. This is what you pay almost $600 for. That's extra. That's like a steering column attachment. Uh, it's obviously been mounted, mounted to some marine fly. Oops. But it's just a single bearing, stainless steel spindle fits in like so. Not important. I'll probably strip that down for the scrap bronze, that's about it. Yeah, you know, take that main outer circlip out and I can punch the whole shaft out of it. The rest of that's useless. So the main thing is trying to strip this down, which is going to be fun because those screws have about 12 slots on them. They're not normal Allen screws or hexagonal screws or anything like that, they're going to be rather nasty. I don't even think I have a driver to remove them, but we'll see. Likewise these fittings which are all pretty much trash, they're burged, dented, scratched. As soon as you get a scratch on one of these hydraulic fittings they just leak, so these are all useless. Well, I guess I should uh, try and measure these with the vernier and risk wasting about, I don't know, $12 worth of socket by machining one of these down thin enough to fit inside that bloody recess. They don't counterbore them big enough to get a normal socket over those screws. Even though they seem to have the same amount of little lands on them as these sockets do. That one there is 8 millimeters. Uh, we're both 8mm, so I've got two spare 8s, but they might also be 9 or 7mm, but I'm guessing probably 8. It just looks like an 8mm. So, I guess we uh, should clear the old lathe off, oil her up, and I'll try machining the socket down. Okay, let's dismantle this thing. 8mm works. Uh, it's, I've found out it's a 5.9 cubic inch 
6 series Charlin steering valve. So the technical term is a steering valve. No mechanical connection between any rack and pinion or anything like that by the looks of it. It's all purely hydraulic rams. So it's pretty good for 4x4s with no possible way of connecting steering to the uh, front end. Uh, boats. Uh, these are an OEM part on a number of different forklifts and things. Uh, yeah, kind of interesting. So, let's see what's inside. Okay, so that's the end plate. It's very well surface ground, that's for sure. It's a very slight scratch all the way around from a bit of dirt that's gotten in there after it's been, after it's been sitting outside. You can see the uh, little pattern that's left on the plate. It's not supposed to be there, that's just a scratch from a bit of grunt, a bit of uh, dirt or something like that. So if I stick that back on there. Oh yeah. I'm guessing there are a couple of different stages. Well that might actually be porting porting to another part of the valve. Very precisely ground component. Seems to be steel, not cast iron. Might be iron. It's dark enough to be iron. That's definitely hardened steel. Yep, very hard. Okay. Interesting little component. You fit in there. That must be for indexing or something. There's a reason for that slot, and there's a pin down inside the guts of it. Cross pin. My compressor just started up. <laughs> plate with a couple of o-rings on it. Also precisely ground steel. That's a stamping. You can see the thin edge and the thicker edge, the sharper edge. It's been punched out of a solid piece and then surface ground. Love the smell of auto trans fluid, or in this case power steering fluid. Well, there's another cap screw in there. Alright, 
so grub screw. I think that's some kind of unloader valve or bypass valve. And I think I have to get this clip out before I can remove the main spindle. Of course, there's a clip in there. Well, I'm going to clean my hands and work on getting that clip out. Okay, well, it wasn't even a sir clip, it was one of these odd ones. Don't often see these, and I uh, usually see them on hydraulic or power steering pumps. Can't remember the proper technical term for them, but they're like a spring. Not hard to get out either. Just get the edge of a screwdriver under one end and just sort of drive it around and just pop it out. Not hard at all. So, now that's out. Should be able to pop this out the gut out of the centre. There we go. So there's the front main seal assembly. There's an inner and outer seal. Yep. So that's the front main assembly. That there is the thrust bearing. Yep, definitely a thrust bearing. Thrust bearings cannot take radial load, they only take thrust load. So they're designed to push against. They cannot take actual radial load, that's what a normal ball bearing races for, like the one in there. And normal ball bearing but races like that <coughs> are terrible at accepting lots of uh, thrust load. So you sort of got to compromise with a tapered roller bearing in that case, or two of them. So, so this is essentially a proportioning valve as far as I can tell. Don't get stuck. Oops. Don't knock the camera over either. Okay, so that's the guts of the unit. There's the pin I was talking about before. So you go down to there and fit onto that, which locks it into that. Oops, there goes the pin. Oh, I see. It opens and closes so many ports to allow fluid through to the uh, hydraulic steering rack. So it's just a, it's a pro pro proportioning valve. Damn it. <coughs> I'm still losing my voice. Actually, I've almost lost my voice. Yeah, it's a rotary proportioning valve of some description. So that's in two pieces. Yeah. How do I get you apart? But either way, it opens and closes these different ports to control the flow of fluid to the cylinders. Oh, hang on. If I knock this pin out, like I almost did before, we should come apart. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Get rid of some of this excess fluid. Okay. So, there's various fluid channels and ports in there. Such pre precisely made material. It's a shame to scrap it, but it shows a lot of scoring and wear and tear on it. So, that's the guts of the unit. And that pin obviously clears through there. Yeah. That pin just goes through the clearance hole. Amazing. And they're fluid channels, not keyways. There's no keys in it apart from this solid roll pin or dowel pin. They look like 
Woodruff key slots but they're to allow fluid pressure through to certain ports on this outer sleeve. Amazingly machined stuff. Yeah. So when you turn the steering column itself, it just turns that. And that means there's also ports inside here. How do I get you out of there? Doesn't look like there's anything else pressed or fitted into this damn thing. How do they get this damn thing together? Hmm. The body itself, apart from that ring in there, it looks like the rest of it's just machined as one piece. But I'm guessing this this assembly here is pressed in after the fact. Because so that's all one casting. There's a major big lip seal in there. Oh, it's not even a lip seal, it's an O-ring o-ring in there that's all normal cast iron housing Just fits in there very closely if I can even get it back in now that I've warmed up with handling it nope I've gotten it warm now that I've been handling it so much so I won't even fit in the damn hole <coughs> it's sort of like diesel injection pumps everything has to be at the specific temperature or the pistons won't even fit into the bores. Uh, yeah, it's not, not a lot awful else left in this damn thing. Hmm. Well, that's about all there really is to it. It's just a rotary proportioning valve. Kind of interesting though, I like this assembly. Amazing detail on the machining and the grinding. And that in there is an internal sleeve actually. Yeah. It's got a sleeve inside it to spread it out in, into the uh, outer walls of this outer sleeve. Some real steampunk sci-fi stuff right there. I assume you're going to be able to get that. There we go. It's one thing about hydraulics, you need very, very close fitting surfaces. And very high tolerance pumps, rotors, all that sort of stuff. It's not the kind of stuff you can just throw together and expect it to work. Interesting. I hope somebody learned something from this because I still don't quite understand how it works myself. But we've got what appears to be a hydraulic motor on this side, or the end of the housing, and a proportioning valve which must send fluid to the uh, cylinders. That one there says LT, and that one there says RP. So, yeah. It's all to do with diverting fluid from one side of a cylinder to another by the looks of it. The more you turn the steering wheel to one direction, the more fluid it sends to that side of the cylinder, which is controlling your steering rack or rudder or whatever it is, whatever it's on. If it's on a boat, it'll control the rudder, so rudder goes that way the more you wind it, rudder goes that way the more you wind it that way. So, yeah. Very interesting. Indirect steering, no mechanical link between the uh, steering wheel and the uh, rudder or wheels being turned. Thanks for watching, folks.